Today, we're going to find out what makes these fenders unique and how to install them properly. I'm also going to show you some neat stuff these guys make for truck boxes, and we're going to get to work on a show truck. All this on the Big Rig Edition of Motorhead Garage. Welcome to Motorhead Garage. Well, Sam and I are on the road today, and we're right out here in the middle of Minnesota. That's right. We're in a town called Blooming Prairie, and this, of course, is a town that popped up because it was a need for the farmers. Exactly. You know, a railroad comes through, and you got literally thousands of acres of farmland around here. Well, the farmers need a way to get their crops to market, hence Blooming Prairie. I guess at one time it was called Boozing Prairie, and we won't get into that. That's right. So today, we're going to show you exactly how some fenders are made, and how to install them. Okay, Craig, so all we have to do now is just drop this down. We're ready to put them on, right? Correct. Okay, Sam, go ahead and drop her down. All right, bud. Hey, folks, we're here at Minimizer getting ready to put on fender covers here on our big rig. And I want you to meet Kruckberg here, who's the owner of this business. And, Craig, you know, these fenders, I've seen trucks with uh, beat-up fenders. They're rusted. They're tore up. You've solved the problem here, haven't you? Correct. You know, what you're seeing on the road is metal fenders all dented and finally right. glass cracked. We've created a plastic fender. Yeah, and these fenders do a lot to help protect the cab and everything else, don't they, Sam? Oh, yeah. Well, these are super durable. And, you know, as you know, some states require fenders, and especially if you're bobtailing. But, you know, the deal is you got dual wheels back there, and they have a tendency to pick stuff up between the wheels and pitch them. The bottom of your trailer, the back of your cab. In fact, you know, you've seen that even go through the window of a day cab. Correct. And you these know, are really rugged and strong. But, you know, while you guys are solving the mysteries of fenders, I'm going to go do some shopping. Uh, that's <laughs> what I thought. You know, Craig, I noticed this is really light compared to, like, other fenders. Right. It's about half of an of aluminum fender. You're about 13 pounds there. All right. Now, this is plastic. You've got it. Uh, this looks like silver. It looks like polished aluminum or stainless steel. It's actually got a chrome finish on it. That is cool. Now, to install these things, it's pretty easy. You don't have to really drill any holes. It's fairly simple to do. Correct. So what we did is we dropped the truck here so we can actually establish kind of the clearance at the lowest level between the wheel and your fender, right? Right. Okay, so what's the next step now we need to do to install what these we'll fenders? What we'll do is we'll, we can shim up. We'll take the boards that we have here and we shim up the fenders because when you let the air out, if you set the fenders too low, mm -hmm. the fenders will rub on the tire. Okay, so you're using these then so as your gauge to... Yep. Yeah, right, that's give you a little bit of clearance so okay. if you let the air out. Okay, good. All right, we, we'll set the fender up there and we'll get started. You know, when you get one of these fender kits from Minimizer, it comes complete. You get the fender plus all the hardware and you don't have to uh, do any drilling or anything. It'll bolt right on. First step is you take your tube here, your swivel mount, and now where do you mount it, Craig? Correct. You want to find a huck bolt on the frame that you're going to have to eventually cut off and use our bolt to replace it. All right. Now, these right here, these are called huck bolts. Correct. Okay. So we cut those off. We've got to locate it first, then cut them off, and then we can mount it, right? Right. And so th this one here looks to be about the right spot. And so, yeah, it does. It fits right up there. So we'll cut that one there. There we have one bolt to go and several more to go, actually. We're going to keep working on it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Motorhead Garage Big Rig Edition is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. And by Bars Leaks Premium Automotive Chemicals. We have the solution. And by Minimizer family owned and operated for over 25 years. And by Tire Max Pro by Hendrickson, the world rides on us. 
ARP, the world leader in fastener technology, the fasteners of champions. Do what we do, use ARP fastener. They are the best in the business. I'll do nothing but ARP. I go to ARP. We don't take any chances, and that's why our equipment is ARP. We use nothing but ARP to keep our rides tight and right. We won three championships using ARP fasteners. We'll use nothing but ARP. You gotta surround yourself with the best, and that's ARP. You have my word on that. ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Introducing the all-new PowerPool 18K fifth wheel hitch from Valley. The PowerPool 18K is a fully articulating fifth wheel hitch built for today's heavy-duty trailers, featuring auto-loading mechanism, kingpin alignment funnel, easily accessible grease fittings, four position adjustable uprights, and pop-out indicator. The PowerPool 18K is tested to exceed SAE specs. To find our nearest dealer, log on to vtowing.com. Welcome back. Well, you know, the Minimizer Company has been in the family for years. They build great stuff, and I knew being here in the heartland, they'd have some collectible stuff stashed somewhere. I walked around, found this garage. Look at these great old tractors. The 404 International is a 51 Farmall Super C. They've got some neat trucks, too. This is a 74 Cargo Star. It's an international cab over. Kind of copied almost a Ford, you know, you look at it. It's got a big stake bed on it and a big tractor on it, but I love old trucks. Look at this. This is a Diamond T. This is Art Deco. It's a 41 cab over. Restored perfectly. It's gorgeous. Great chrome. Beautiful paintwork on it. And the interior is exquisite. I popped open the door. I looked at this. If I could have figured out how to get the garage door open, because this thing runs, I would have been driving it home. It's an absolutely beautiful truck. Done to the nines. Even got leather inside. Now, this is going to go to a truck show. And if you look, the uh, bed's all been restored. Got nice wood on it. It's a big, long, flat bed. And of course, you know whose fenders are on. It's got minimizer fenders. And there's all kinds of neat stuff in here. It's got a collection of Farmall. There's a Super H, pretty rare tractor. You got a Farmall 200, W4 or C, Studebaker steak body. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of great stuff here. I'd like to have it all, and I'd like to play with it some more. But we need to get back in and see how these guys are making out with the fenders. All right, well, we've made some progress here. What I've got is we've got our swivel bracket mounted here in the back slider tube on like so. You can see this is ribbed so you get a nice clamping force on there. We'll just leave that loose. Next step is we'll put our front bracket on. And Craig, I want to show the folks what comes in this kit. You get all the bolts, nuts, plus all the spacers in this thing. And with your swivel bracket, I notice here this has got a lot of ribs on it. I guess that's so that that gives it some teeth so you Correct. can clamp those tubes on there. Right especially if you're using like a plastic tube or something. Yep, and it allows it to, uh, like you said, take a bite. Right, and also you got two holes here, which will give you some flexibility for mounting, right? It'll allow you four inches of movement, six inches of swivel. Good, okay, let's go ahead and we'll get these on and we get this thing bolted up. Okay, I'm gonna have one of my guys underneath so you don't have to. I'm glad. <laughs> Have it felt? It got her on there. Yes. Okay, now the next step is We've got our spacers here so we can measure the distance, uh, maintain the distance between the fender and the top. And you go ahead and put your tube on there. If you can grab the fender here, we'll set that up and center it. Okay, there you go. You gonna work for yep, you? Just lift it straight up and we'll go right over the top. Oh, okay, like that? Yep. And I'll take your side down and we'll put my side on. Oh, there we go. All the knowing how, isn't it? It is. Okay, and we have to step back and make sure we're 
measured properly from the floor. Okay, so you're going to measure from the bottom of the fender down to the floor to make sure that's even on both sides. Correct. You can eyeball it, but it's always best to be safe. Good deal. Okay, we're at 23 here. 23. How about 22 and a half here? We're coming your way a little bit. Yeah, 21. And that might be too far. Shit. Yep, a little bit. I'll bring it back. Which way you want to go? Bring it towards me. Okay, I'm at 23. Okay, that should do it. And then if you can slide that pipe forward once you get that measure. Let me see what I got. Yep. Let me get check mine. Okay. We're in good shape. Okay. Push that pipe forward and we'll be uh, set the measure. All right. I'd say we're in business there. All right, Craig, now well, we got our fender located. Now it's time to drill the holes or at least put on the mounting U bolts. And you can see in the kit, you get U bolts like this. It's got nuts on it. These are stainless too, aren't Correct. they? And you also have your backing plates that go with it. So what's the trick on this? So what you want to do is once you get your fender centered front and back, right to left, you want to slide the U-bolt over, center it on one of our three ribs, and then take a marker and mark the uh, spot where you want to drill the holes. And also, if you want to make sure it's correct, you can put the, slide this up there, get your first mark, and then this hole is going to be perfect. You won't have to do any movement. Use that for a drill guide. Correct. Great. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll get this marked off and we can drill it. More than 95 years, Hendrickson continues to demonstrate a steadfast commitment to serving our customers' needs. Our commitment to developing world-class products is what makes Hendrickson the name to turn to for cutting-edge solutions to industry problems. This assurance is exemplified by innovations like TireMax Pro, which delivers a handy solution for haulers struggling to maintain proper tire inflation. Reliable, exceptional, durable. Tire Max Pro. Innovation you expect from Hendrickson. Rigmaster Power offers generators and inverters, giving flexibility so that you can discover the right APU for your truck. The completely independent system is simple to install without mounting any components on the back of your sleeper cab. Does not affect your truck's OEM warranty and will never cause a missed or late delivery or take your truck out of service. Rigmaster has applied their experience to choosing quality brand name components and developing a product that delivers performance value and dependability. Discover the difference. Round the job site. Round town. Off the road. Or around the corner. Ride on the tires that fit your style. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Mars Leaks Engine Repair contains a combination of the best performance additives to repair the most...
Oil-related problems. Engine repair restores lost compression and power, reduces noise and oil consumption while improving the performance of worn cylinders, rings, bearings, and seals. For most vehicles, this is your last chance before paying an expensive repair bill or replacing the vehicle. Engine repair can be used to top off the existing oil when low or add a bottle when changing the oil and filter. Compatible with all types of engine oils, including petroleum, synthetic, and high mileage formulas. Okay, folks, now we got it all installed. We'll peel off this protective cover and take a look at it. Craig, I'll tell you what. Boy, did that come out nice. Only thing we have left now are just these little plastic plugs that go in the end of the pipe. Put those in and we're in business, right? Right, just take the cap, pop it in, take a rubber hammer to it, just pop them into place. Boy, I'll tell you what. Thank you. You guys did a great job. It looked good. I leave you alone, and you go on and do all the work. Where have you been this whole time? Well, I'll tell you what. I found a garage next door and found a whole bunch of neat stuff, but it's a secret. You know, these are really great fenders. They look good on this truck. They're going to last for a long time, and I want to see how they're made. Well, let's go down to the factory and take a look. All right, let's do it. All right, well, we're going to do that. Stick around. We'll show you how it's done. Hey, on this week's industry update, we're going to give you a little bit of information here about tires, especially if you're wanting to go to a little bit bigger tire or a smaller tire. In this particular case, we're going to a, a bigger tire. Hercules Tires has sent us a whole sample of tires here. They make great tires. Take this one right here. This is an LT or a light truck tire. Now, this is a big, rugged, off-road tire, well-made, and of course, it's a pretty aggressive thread. Might be a little noisy in the road, but that's not why you buy it. And when you go to a dealer, a Hercules dealer, Tell them what you want to do. They'll tell you what tires to put on so you don't have any interference issues. That's the best way to do it instead of trying to guess it yourself. Go to the experts, tell them what you're trying to accomplish, and they can guide you in the right direction. And, of course, if you're going to go up to a larger tire, you've got to make sure you're going to have the proper clearance, and you want to make sure you have the right wheel size as well. Once you get that all information, then it's a determining what type of tire you actually want to use. And what Sam has right here is a pretty aggressive pattern. That's great for off-road, but on the road, it's going to be a little bit noisy. This one right here is really going to be better suited for being on the road. But we were talking to Jed Emmons, uh, Vice President of Hercules Sales, and he gave us a little bit of advice when you want to upgrade on a tire. When you change out a tire that's both taller and wider than stock, it's going to affect your speedometer. So make sure that uh, you reprogram your speedometer with a good quality program. Well, now we hope you got the information on upgrading tires. If you follow those instructions, get the right information from your dealer, you're not going to go wrong. Well, it's a big place. You've got a lot going on here, don't you? have a whole lot going on here. Absolutely. Tell us how this all happens, John. What we do is we start with a flat piece of sheet of a high-density polyethylene material. Mm -hmm. It's got a texture on it, the height, scratch, and mar, as you can see here. And we have a, also a material that's for the diamond plate, so the truck industry is big in the diamond plate. Oh, yeah. And so that's actually plastic, not metal. And what we do is we just take the flat sheet and load it into the machine, which I'll show you over here. Okay. Sounds like a deal. We'll take All right. Out. I saw something over here I want to check out. Okay. Great. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Since 1936, Detroit Radiator has been manufacturing heavy-duty cooling systems. Much has changed over the past 75 years, but the one thing that hasn't is their commitment to quality products and legendary service. No matter the application on or off-road, Detroit Radiator can design, engineer, and manufacture a cooling system to fit your specific needs. Backing it with the best warranty in the business. Call Detroit Radiator today at 800-525-0011. More than 95 years, Hendrickson continues to demonstrate a steadfast commitment to serving our customers' needs. Our commitment to developing world-class products is what makes Hendrickson the name to turn to for cutting-edge solutions to industry problems. This assurance is exemplified by innovations like TireMax Pro.
There's a handy solution for haulers struggling to maintain proper tire inflation. Reliable, exceptional, durable. Tire Max Pro. Innovation you expect from Hendrickson. Reaching the toolbox in your truck shouldn't require a leap of faith. That's why Amp Research invented Bed Step 2. Box side steps flip down with your foot to give you a leg up to access your truck bed. Mounts on either side. Supports 300 pounds. Features a high traction composite step pad for sure footing. High strength die cast aluminum alloy made in the USA construction. All backed by a three year warranty. So step on it. Visit amp-research.com for more information. Garage Big Rig Edition is being brought to you by Minimizer, family owned and operated for over 25 years. And by New England Welding, makers of Carrymore, the best truck bed extender on the market. And by Landmark, a one stop shop for transportation solutions. And by Gear Rich, official tools of Motorhead Garage. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, we're here in the Minimizer factory. And this is where it all happens. This is where they make everything. In fact, this is an actual vacuum forming machine. Correct. What we do is the sheet that I showed you, right. we put the sheet inside the oven. It gets clamped into a frame, goes in the oven. The oven is just like your oven at home. Okay. Uh, it gets up to 325, 350 degrees. And what it's doing is it'll heat the sheet to bubblegum consistency. Ah, so it gets kind of sticky and soft. Right, Move pliable, yeah. right, pliable. Okay. And so then what'll happen is you'll get to a certain temperature, it'll come out, the, the two frames will come together okay. and create a seal, and when that happens, the vacuum will kick out. Okay. And the vacuum's applied to that die where the fender is. What, what's the vacuum's purpose? The vacuum will suck all the air out of it, because ah. you're taking a flat, gooey sheet and you need to form around something, so it sucks all the air out, wraps it around the tool. Cool. All right, so then it sits in there for how long? It'll be in there for about five minutes in a heating cycle, mm -hmm. and then it'll sit on, you know, it's gotta get hard again so we can take it off. Right. And so once it gets hard after about five minutes cooling, and then when it comes out for that, and we take it over to the robot so we can finish it up. So this is, I can see here, the robot trim, huh? Correct, this is how we trim out the final part. Okay. And so I've got one loaded here. If you'd like to hit the green button over there to start the cycle. You're gonna trust it. me with your machinery? There's only one little button. This one here, huh? This. All right. So now that'll go it into the robot. In. Uh -huh. And as you can see here, that's the finished part. I see. It comes off the robot, and you can see how the drop is falling off. Now that's an actual done part. Great, that's a completed fender. And of course, that's nice and safe. I can hear that thing screaming in the background. It's cutting it apart, huh? Correct. So tell me what you got here. What we do here, you know, you got the chrome fender, it's cool. Mm -hmm. But now it's even gets cooler if you start throwing lights in it. Boy, that is nice. Look at that. And these are just regular. Just the simple LED lights that they pop right in. Mm -hmm. And on the back side, being that we used to start with a single sheet like we've seen over in the manufacturing department, we have to weld a plate into the back. Uh -huh. On the back side here, I'm going to let Trevor uh, show you how to do that here. I see you got different colors those ways. You make these in black and black, white, white silver, mm -hmm. uh, red. Cool. Um, a liquid palladium color and also the chrome. That's great. So he just eyeballs that in there to yeah, cover just it? Yeah, he just lays a plate in on the back side here and he uses a plastic welder. Uh, when you weld plastics, you have to, the two materials have to be the same. Right. And then the material that you're using, it's just, it's just like uh, toothpaste. Mm -hmm. A hot toothpaste, so he just welds that right in. Well, look at this. Now, this was trimmed off the side of one of those fenders, huh? Correct. That's a lot of material, isn't it? You know, we don't want to waste them. I mean, it's, it's valuable material. So when they, when they take it off the robot, they throw it in these carts, mm -hmm. and we wheel it back here. We throw it into the grinder. It's like a tree shredder that you see on the boulevard, mm -hmm. guys trimming trees. And then it gets vacuumed up, and the material falls into the box, and we uh -huh. send that back, and they use it back in our material again. So it's just a continuous cycle. The people that you got your original stuff from, your, your raw material, they take it back, make those sheets again. Correct. That's a great way not to waste any material. That really keeps the landfills nice and empty. So this is, you know, where it all takes place, and you got it all done here. Do you got anything else? Well, we got one more thing I'd like to take, show you. Okay. You look at. Let's go. 
Oh, look at what I found right here. What you got, man? You got a refrigerator? Hey, yeah, no, this is one of those box bolts up to the chassis, you know? Uh, Utility box. box, great. Yeah. Look at this, all sealed on the inside. Boy, that's rugged, too. It is, and look at this. Locks up nicely. Put her down there, even got a lock on that. So you make these, huh? 24 and a 36 inch box. That's a 24 that you see there. Uh-huh. This is like goes on the rollback record. There's a place to put their chains. And yep. I know some of the guys even put their hydraulic levers in there, don't Correct. they? Correct. That's and really neat. That is a nice piece. I tell you, it's amazing what you see when you're just kind of waltzing around in a man's business. You have been waltzing around while we were over here in the factory work. I know, but take a look over here. What's that? I found, Sam, a genuine mud flap making machine. A mud flap making machine. A mud machine. flap making machine. They got it right here. If you want, to, if you want to show him how to make a mud flap, go ahead. Just hit the switch to the blue button. Right, hit the there. blue button and then put both your hands in there. in there and have at her. All right, let's see what. We already let's... have a blank in there, so let's see what it makes. Well, I got it working. That's a press, isn't it? No, it's a 50-ton press. That's why they keep your hands out of there. So that okay. makes the operator make right. sure he knows where he's hitting. Oh, so now can I take that out? Pull it out. Oh, you're not going to believe this. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Put a piece of tape on here. I'll be darned. What do you think of that, folks? Motorhead garage mud flap. Mine. Can I keep this? Yes, you can. Great. Gentlemen, there's one more thing. We have a show truck we'd like to show you. All Work. right, should I shut off that machine? Uh, we'll let the guys worry about it after we leave. All right, let's go see that truck. I'm taking this. You can have it. I don't have a truck. It's pretty, isn't it? It sure is. Man, there's a lot of work to making these things sparkle, I can tell you that from the way it's looking. Tell you what, when you look at these fenders, this is a little different style than we put on the other truck. Right, this is straight across, and the, the install, we use single axle. We cover each axle individually. Mm -hmm. This one covers it in a span. Boy, these are really pretty. Now, what's the, uh, the uh, trick to taking care of these things so you don't mess them up? Unlike a chrome or a stainless fender, we just go to work and wash them off, soap and water. Uh, you, no polish. You wax it if you want. Uh, you don't need to use chrome polish. It always looks like this with soap and water. Well, I'll tell you what. This is a fantastic truck, and uh, it takes a while to get it all cleaned up. And you can see the guys here right now waxing or polishing, cleaning. Takes them quite a while to get everything done to detail out for a show, doesn't it? Anybody that does a show truck, they're pretty particular. If you look at the bolts, even the heads all line up straight. But I'll tell you what. It's pretty nice. Well, I want to thank you for letting us come down here. Yep. It's been great to see how you do all this. And yeah, I worked pretty hard, you know, doing all this. I know you worked pretty hard. Yeah. But appreciate the tour. <laughs> oh, thanks for joining us at Minimizer. Appreciate well, it. folks, we had a great time. Hope you did, too. We'll see you again next time here on Motorhead Garage. Bye-bye. Boy. Got a ways to go, though. He's got some on. things. All bolt on. Nice. Yeah.